This is Jonas from Catatonia. You're watching Metal One. Greetings from Metal Wani, I'm Carl and we're delighted to be here with Jonas of the legendary Catatonia who headlined Dublin's Academy this evening. Welcome, man. Thank you very much. So you guys are still out supporting your latest record, The Fall of Hearts, and tonight officially marks the end of the band's Fall of Hearts UK and Ireland tour. So how have these shows been so far, man? It's been good. Uh, it's, it's been a um, run of uh, eight shows, I think. And uh, um, I mean, we, we got to cover more of, of England and Ireland than we did on the Euro tour where we only played in London. So yeah, so I saw, yeah. yeah. So that's, uh, it feels right to come back here and, and do something more. And thank you for coming back here because we don't get it very often, yeah, so thank cool. you, man. So after being on the road as long as you have, I know for you it wasn't always exactly a joy to tour. And I'm just wondering now these days, is it, you know, is it more enjoyable to tour or, or is there still some different challenges you face these days? No, I think it's more enjoyable um, these days. We get more, um, I mean, time on stage, time to prepare everything than we did in the past. And in the past, we usually traveled with a van and stuff like that. So now it's it's a bit more comfortable. Sure. Which is nice when you get older. <laughs> <laughs> so I'd love to talk about Fall of Hearts for a moment, if that's okay. As someone who's relatively new to the band over the last year or two, uh, when Fall of Hearts dropped, I, you know, I was hooked straight away. But I also noticed that uh, a lot of newer people were hooked as well, a lot of younger people. I was wondering, did you notice that? Did you notice that it brought in a new audience and maybe a younger audience as well with Fall of Hearts? Yeah, I think so. Yeah. I think we've seen a little bit of that, at least. Um, I think uh, a lot of young people growing up now is getting into uh, some of the more progressive music. Mm -hmm. And I think we can sort of be put in that sort of uh, you know, context of our music. Sure. So I think that's brought some, some younger people to the... Cool. Is that interesting for the band over your evolution to see these younger faces in the audience, new generation? Yeah, it's nice. Yeah, it's nice. yeah. excellent. Uh, so when I listen to Follow Hearts, I find it's just so full of different colors and textures that re-gel together so well. Uh, there's heavier moments, of course, and some melancholic ones, like uh, Old Hearts Fall, Residual, and other times it's actually kind of upbeat, like serene. It's actually quite uplifting, I find. Yeah. And I'm curious as to where this diversity comes from. Is there a formula to your writing? And of course, what's your take on the record? Uh, I think the diversity is, it comes from uh, that we don't really want to repeat ourselves. But sure. also we are, uh, of course, we have a style that we're comfortable with. Mm -hmm. We try to uh, expand it as much as we can within that sort of frame. Um, and also we're two songwriters. I write uh, music, Anders. Uh, yeah. Writes music, so uh, that gives some natural diversity as well. Yeah, wonderful. Uh, and I think that the album is, um, as you say, it's it's diverse. It's uh, it's got light and shade, which I like. It's, yeah. Uh, it's not all about just one feeling. It's it's like a a web of different emotions. Yeah. Portrayed. And I think uh, for me personally, anyway, when you talk about that light and shade and that contrast, when I listened to shifts, I noticed in like the verses that there was almost this kind of wailing siren yeah, setting yeah. the background, and yeah. then the contrast in the chorus. It was almost like these, uh, correct me if I'm wrong, these kind of Celtic pan flutes almost that kind of pierced yeah, that tension. Yeah. And I was just wondering, um, uh, maybe it's just the Irish in me appealing to it, <laughs> but I was just wondering, um, was that kind of a conscious decision when you wrote that song for that kind of contrast, you know, from silence, this real... Uh, yeah, yeah, I think so. Yeah. Because we wanted... Uh, I think originally we talked about the song as being... It sounded like a bit of a... Uh, it sounds like... Almost like a dance song from the 40s. Or sure, yeah, 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 exactly. Then we, we started... Like thinking up a, like a story behind it, mm. like uh, it being uh, someone who's going into a war, knowing that he might not come back. Mm. And so the lyrics are telling like a story of uh, someone who knows they're gonna die. And yeah, what the, the, his past life meant to him. Yeah, what it, what it reminded me of musically as well was when you guys strip back everything, which I know you were quite nervous yeah. about at the time. Uh, when you guys stripped back Tear Gas, first of all, it's a wonderful reimagining. But I was wondering, when you stripped back those songs that you had in your catalogue, did that kind of influence you in terms of what came later in writing? Yeah, I think so. Yeah? Yeah. When we did the whole acoustic tour and mm. everything, uh, I think that gave us a spark to try more of the acoustic and, and more stripped down songs. Yeah, and it really works. Yeah, I think so. I think so too. 
And uh, actually, yeah, re- I was recently uh, watching an interview with the with Lordy's front man. He said most of the music fans in Finland are moving towards rap and hip hop and other genres and slowly getting away from metal. Are you seeing the same in Sweden? Uh, I don't know. I don't think so. Yeah. I know there's, you know, like house music is really popular, which is something I can't understand. But, yeah, I agree. <laughs> uh, I think there is still a lot of like metal fans, and, um, as you can. Um, as we already said, uh, we see a lot of more young people on, on our concerts. So yeah. I think it's a uh, it's growing level. Here. Wonderful. Yeah. And uh, just I uh, have to ask uh, when we uh, when we were talking about rap and hip hop and all that, there uh, will we ever get to hear the demos of the rap band formed by yourself and Opets, Mikael? <laughs> <laughs> no, I don't think so. Is there any reason why we wouldn't get to hear that? Maybe just kind of more curiosity. Um, no, it's it's just plain stupid fun we did back in the day. Yeah. <laughs> we used to live together for some time and, and we started new bands every day and we recorded it on a, like a four tracker. <laughs> so we wanted like every genre to be we would like to say like we have a, a band in any, every, any genre. Wonderful. <laughs> um so the evolution of the Catatoni sound is quite evident, I think. Uh, you guys have evolved over the years from some extreme metal to today, where there is much more of an introspection and an atmosphere, I think, uh, while it still kind of retains this metal undercurrent. Mm. Uh, did you find there to be uh, an open-mindedness amongst your fans over the de- development, where there, or did you find there were heavy elitists who kind of went, oh, I don't, I don't like this, you know, it's not, it's not heavy enough for me? No, I think most of our uh, the fans they know what to expect from us mm-hmm. and we pretty much know what to expect from them as well. Mm-hmm. I think even in back in the day when we were more of an extreme metal band, we still had this kind of uh, emotional um, kind of core to it. Yeah. Yeah. So I think uh, even when we changed like the vocal style, I think most people could imagine that would happen. And do you, did it, well, if, it, if it didn't lose fans, do you think it brought in maybe a broader audience? Yeah, more accessible. these days, absolutely. Yeah. Yeah. Fantastic. From, from every album we can see it. Like a Brilliant. And uh, I read somewhere something that struck me as quite interesting and ironic, maybe, uh, that you guys are you're happy with, the happiest when you're in your darkest places writing for Ka- uh, Catatonia. Yeah, I think it comes with the creativity, mm. that, that flow of creativity. It's kind of like a congenially yeah. depressed state, I suppose. Yeah. It's kind of pleasant. or uh, It is pleasant when you actually can make something out of it. Well, what, what fuels that state, or is it kind of just great, you know, from great pain comes great art? Uh, I don't know, it's everyday life, it's just, I'm not saying that we're 100% depressed people all the no, time. No, sure. <laughs> but we do have our, our dark times, as anyone has, but we, we just try to get something creative out of it. And once, when you can combine those two, I think that's a very nice yeah. way of doing it. <laughs> Fantastic. And finally, if it's not too early, can you tell us a bit about what might be next for Catatonia? Uh, I have no idea actually at the moment. We're still on the touring cycle for this album, and the album still feels new to me. Yeah, least. even after all this time. Yeah. Like, so uh, we haven't really started thinking about the next chapter. That's fair. Well, thank you, Jonas, for taking the time to talk with us here at Metal Money today. Have a great show tonight. We wish you all the best with the rest of the tour, my thank friend. Thank you very much.